steady now. JRPG with high school socialising and creature creation. It's a combination which seems ill-fitting on the surface. But Persona 3, the first Persona to see release in Europe, is a concoction which works beautifully, making for a hugely distinctive adventure. While a few design quirks prevent it from reaching the absolute pinnacle of its genre, it's still a superb and captivating role-playing experience. With addictive qualities, an invitingly dark tone, likeable characters, and reams of optional content, it is a fully featured and enjoyable romp released late into the PS2's life. Following a seemingly ordinary group of high school students, Persona 3 reveals a dark secret once the clock hits midnight an extra dark hour, where most are left in stasis and suffering from the effects. These students, however, can not only freely explore this time, but also combat the shadows using Persona, summon deities which exhibit more power than mere humans. The General Fred sees you aiming to climb the expansive Tartarus Tower, while dealing with more powerful forces at hand. Persona 3 tells a compelling yarn, which is bolstered by a charming cast of characters. From the kind yet sassy Yukari, to the brashly immature Junpei, and the competitive mentor Akihoko, everyone at the dorm proves likeable and relatable to an extent. The side characters you meet, some of which bore tangled and emotionally complicated stories, are great too. There's a few surprising twists, gutting ends, and mostly solid storytelling. <laughs> At its core, Persona 3 structures everything around a calendar, as you are free to spend each day how you please, at least in theory. As a student, you of course have to attend lessons, and these occasionally throw questions at you to ensure you're paying attention, with stat rewards your prize for correct answers. Your protagonist is graded on three elements, academics, charm, and courage. These open up certain places, reward new equipment, and pave the way for more social links, proving valuable. However, even a hero has their limits and pushing your character too far can result in tiredness and illness, limiting your capacity for heroism. Certain days will allow you to spend free time developing social links, buying items, and training. The balancing of life keeps days from becoming too similar, and while resting can slow your progress somewhat, the leeway given is more than manageable. Three key components define Persona 3. The first is social links, which revolve around who you interact with during school. Each character you can befriend will help grow one of several arcana, which prove useful in learning new skills for the Dark Hour. But these social interactions prove compelling in their own right. Side characters are fully fleshed out, with lengthy narratives which can be shaped by your dialogue choices. For example, Kasushi Miyamoto is a valued sports player who, we come to learn, is suffering from an injury, and for reasons he's reluctant to disclose, he refuses to abandon his dreams. While taking part in sports builds your friendship, you'll also find yourself forced to choose between his safety and his goals. Social links all feel this deep, and require careful planning to upgrade as taking on multiple at once can lead you to being double booked on a free day and reversing your social link, 
requiring extensive work to repair. Second is the Persona themselves. All the C's team come with one, but your hero can wield multiple. This allows you to change between different magic sets, skills, and strengths during battle with ease. But the cool part comes from fusion. In the Velvet Room, you can combine multiple Persona together to create new ones, often stronger. The interesting detail is skill inheritance as you can pass a set number of skills from each fused character into the new creation, allowing for a huge level of experimentation. Imagine, for example, creating a four-element Lilum. She lacks any weaknesses to certain elements, and with all four spell elements on her side, she becomes very useful. You can further buff Persona with stat-boosting cards, which while diminishing the importance of levelling Persona somewhat, bar learning new skills, really let your creativity flow. The social links then come into play, with higher level links adding bonus XP to fusions, giving you a great head start. Once you are able to combine three or more Persona, things become very in-depth. These fall into place for the last component of Persona 3, the dungeon crawling. This is, admittedly, the weakest bit of the experience, but not by much. You can opt to explore the Dark Hour almost any day of the week, bar some due to narrative blockades. Tartarus offers 200 plus floors of monster fighting, and combat manages to keep things interesting. You can add a squad of up to three fighters to accompany you, and these guys can be ordered to support, attack, or stand by. And even in exploration, you can send them out to clear a floor. Scanning enemy weaknesses proves invaluable, allowing you to exploit it, knock down creatures, and then perform an all-out attack, a powerful group assault. The problems lie within the design of the dungeons, or lack thereof. With procedural generation serving as the main source of layouts, Dungeon floors often feel very interchangeable, with mere aesthetic tweaks between floors. While there's plenty of teleports and escape routes, including easy access to boss floors, you can't help but feel Persona 3's dungeons lack the same dynamism of the other components. There's a chance. Let's get him! Get back here, you son of a- what a stunning victory! It could be down to the sheer length of Persona 3 too. You'd be very lucky to complete this one with a playtime less than 70 hours, which is longer than most JRPGs of the time. This doesn't factor in exploring social links, an optional dungeon unlocked near the end, and the litany of subquests handed out by Elizabeth. These range from creating specific Persona, killing certain enemies and acquiring items from them, and even the occasional exploration outside of the Dark Hour. Let's just say, Persona 3 will be spinning in your tray for a long time. Persona 3 clearly shows influence from anime, adopting a clean visual style which isn't flashy but gets the job done. Stills of each character look solid, somewhat aping visual novels, and key moments are punctuated by gorgeous anime cutscenes. Combat ups the detail somewhat, kind of like how Final Fantasy VII would swap styles, and explosive spells shake the screen without compromise. The highlight is the plethora of monster designs, ranging from creepy to downright scary. The only downer is the environments, be it the clinical looking real world, or the drab dungeons. The sound fares tremendously, boasting solid voice acting which doesn't butcher the script like some Japanese translations, bar a few goofier reads. The effects, from the compelling combat strikes to unsettling monster groans, all work well too, but the music stands out in particular 
with a catchy plethora of songs from a multitude of genres. From the ominous Tartarus music, to the toe-tapping battle theme, and integration of jazz, classical and rock music, it all hits the spot perfectly. Despite some issues, Persona 3 remains a magnetic JRPG which will be hard to put down. A trifactor of elements lend it some real standout qualities on a console which was not short of these games. Whether it's building social links with the many students of Geku Kanhai, building your ultimate persona, or grinding away at the gauntlet of Tartarus, Atlas has ensured players would be kept on their toes. While the lack of meaningful dungeon design can lead to some repetition, and some nasty difficulty spikes may frustrate those looking to further the story, these aren't enough to spoil a great experience. Persona 3 is one of the sturdiest and most engrossing JRPGs for the PS2, and is an experience you won't soon forget.